Well, it's my uh, privilege and honor today to have uh, my friend Samuel Robinson joining us. And Sammy's going to be on, sharing and, and we're going to just have a time of discussion and enjoying uh, just visiting as friends. Sammy and I, now I think it's been, I think we've known each other for, my goodness, it's got to be about six or seven years now. For sure. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, we've, been, we've been hanging out and, and brothers from other mothers, we, we, like to, <laughs> we, like to, we like to think we are. And uh, so I, I invited Sammy here today because I think that he's one of, Sammy is, uh, is one of these amazing leaders who just lives in, in a, a, an attitude in a heart of revival. And, and I felt that, that, that in light of, of for, you know, forcing these, this storm to serve us, I thought that bringing Sammy here would be a great opportunity for us to really dive into to, uh, uh, what it means to have our homes become places of revival and to yeah. ignite hope. And this guy starts fires in a, in a good way, like revival <laughs> fires. This guy, he starts them all over the place. Like uh, the apostolic leader of Voice of Revival Ministries, uh, profound entrepreneurial heart. He's got some unique things that, that, that we're not going to share today, but I got told we can't, but, but we, we will share uh, in the future. And and, and it's just become a, a wonderful friend and partner in ministry. So, Sammy, welcome. Thank you. And uh, why don't you lead us in prayer, and okay. then we'll dive in today. Yep. So, Father, we just thank you right now for your presence uh, in our homes, Lord, wherever we are today. Lord, we thank you right now that you are Lord of all. And, Lord, yeah. I thank you right now just for all those that are watching Lord, that they would experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, yeah. that it would guard our hearts and our minds. And Lord, that we can take comfort in this, that Jesus, you are the one that's going to lead us. You are the one that's going to protect us. You're the one that's going to guide us. And we thank you, Lord, that we're going to come out of this season stronger than ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm curious, just uh, as we begin, like, what's, what's on your heart today? Like, what, what's the Lord been saying, saying well, to you? Well, you know, Landon, we're, we're in this wild season right now. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where talking to my wife, Kristen, just even this last week of, of you know, where the world's at, we haven't really been in, in a place like this before. Yeah. And just praying about, you know, being with you guys, what to share, I really felt like the Lord said this to me. He said, Samuel, with this whole message of forcing storms to serve you, that the Lord wants to take the places of our inconvenience mm. and turn them into places of opportunity. Come on. And I feel like this is something that the Lord's really been speaking to, to I think to a lot of us that are, are in unknown territory. Here we are, you know, and it's not, it's not even just a localized thing. This is a worldwide thing that's going on right now. And, and many, many people are looking, whether it's to the news or, or, you know, different things to figure out what is happening, what are we called to do? Right. And I feel like the Lord was just speaking to me out of, you know, James chapter one. I want to read this in a moment of that the Lord is with us in this time. And that even though we might not know what to do, God mm -hmm. knows what to do. Mm -hmm. And that even though that there are things that feel like they're, maybe they're out of our control, Control, or, or maybe it looks like, wow, like, I know for me being home, this is just a side funny note, Landon. Uh, I, my, my respect level for my wife has always been high. <laughs> but being home, as many of you know, I travel, I do itinerant ministry, right. to be with the kids <laughs> every, you know, every day, you know, waking up. I, I looked at my wife, it was a couple days ago, and I'm like, you are a superhero. <laughs> like, you are amazing. Like, it's just, there's certain things that, you know, are just coming into light. And I, and I felt like the Lord said this, Sammy, you can either complain about the situation that we're in or we can choose to embrace it and believe God that out of this something amazing is going to happen yeah. and so if I can let I want to read Please. just just out of the book of James chapter 1 and if you've got your Bibles James chapter 1 and I'm going to start in verse 2 and here's James he's talking to the church about trials and he says in verse 2 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing wow and i and i you know praying about you know this time with you and and just what the lord put on my heart that i just felt that that part 
uh, of that chapter just spoke so much to me because here we are, we're in a season where I feel like a lot of us, we're in a little bit of a trial. Yeah. And, and here's the interesting thing about a trial. You know, James says, you know, uh, that you fall into a trial. Yeah. You know, when you think about that, you're like, wait a second, what does that mean? Well, you never, when a trial, come, trial comes, you never feel like it's going to happen. It's unexpected. Mm. When you mm. fall, it's unexpected. And it's one of these things where I feel like in this season, we've come into this place where it's like, wow, we're in this situation. It's completely different than what we've ever been in. But there's a perfecting of our faith. There's a place where the Lord is making us stronger. And out of that place, it's going to uh, create in us a patience. And I feel like this is a big word, especially right now, Landon. Like, mm, mm. you know, I, I, I've been saying, man, you know, when is this thing going to be over? What's going to happen in this season? What are we going to do? And I feel like many of you today, you're, you're watching, you're like, uh, you know, what's, what's going to happen in this next time? Is this going to be over next week or next month? But here we see James, he says something profound. He says, guys, listen, that the, even though you fall into trials, you know, there's a, there's a strengthening of your faith that takes place that creates patience. Yeah so that you will lack nothing. And I feel wow. like we're in a season, Landon, where the Lord is taking this, these inconveniences and he's turning them into opportunities for those that are willing to embrace it. So, so when we talk about inconveniences, just open up what, what, you're, what you're feeling 100%. about that. Because like, like, I think you know, we've got just the natural inconveniences, obviously, of, of social distancing. Yeah, and, I know. I want to give you a hug. I know. <laughs> if you, you know for me, like, I, I happen to be, touch is one of my love languages, and so I, I feel like I'm an exposed nerve. Cause, you know, so, so, but you know, we talk about these inconveniences. Like, um, I think one of the things that happens, too, is that we, we just assume the social inconveniences are there. But there's really, there's, there's you know, there's the familial you know, inconveniences, like just in family, in, in, in the spirit. But, but when we look at them, like, what do you mean by that? Just yeah, unpack hun- that for Yeah, 100%. Me. And, you know, I, I feel especially now, you know, we always have inconveniences in life. Mm. You know, there's always little things that go on, you know. But when it's times like this right now where things are a little bit slowed down, mm. you start to notice, I don't know about you, but I start to notice more that's happening. And, and so I know for the season that we're in right now, you know, we, we, you know I've, we talk about family revival. Let's take family revival sure. for a second. You know, a lot of us, we've heard that term, you know, that's our heart. Lord, we want to see family revival. Now I'm at home. I prophesied this. I've preached this, Landon. I'm at home with my three girls who are six and under that wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. And, and my wife's like, hey, honey, by the way, now that you're home, you've got the kids in the morning. And so there I am. And my kids, you know, are, are energetic. I'm tired. I, I'm like, Lord, help me. I, you know, uh, <laughs> there's all these things that go on. And then the Lord's like, what are you going to do? You talk about family revival, having revival in your home. We talk about all these things. And, and I feel like the Lord is saying, like, Samuel, I want to take the things that have been spoken out there as prophetic words, and I want to make them practical in everyday life. And so that's one thing. Another thing I feel like right now that many people are going through for inconveniences, whether it's, you know, work. You know, there's a lot of people right now, and I feel if you're watching today, you know, your job. Yeah. There's so many jobs, like Alberta in itself you know, has been already struggling in the economy. And there's so many people right now that are worried, like, what am I going to do? Do I have work next week? Right. You know what I mean? Am I going to be able to pay my bills? How am I going to do all these things? And so we've got all of these questions. And here's the thing about uh, inconvenience. Inconvenience always has the element of the unknown, and it always brings on questions, and it brings on this weight of like, what, what's going to happen? And so we're seeing that. And, and for some of us today, we're really having to trust the Lord. Psalms 23 talks about the Lord is my shepherd, yeah. and I shall not want. Right. And so there's these different things that are happening in the lives of people where it's very easy to feel discouraged. Yeah. And this is the thing, if you want to know things with inconvenience, you know, you know, it's easy to be discouraged, it's easy to complain. Yeah. It's easy to feel like, like you're the only one. And, and I feel like we're in this season right now where the Lord is, he's saying, you know, we can either look at our current situation from our perspective 
right. or we can rise above it and see from his perspective. And but that's, you know, and that, what's profound about that is that there, there, there's likely some folks joining us today who maybe for them, you hear, you hear revival, yeah. you hear that word revival. What does that mean? Or, or you know, prophetically. Or, so, so from just to, to, to make that simple so that, uh, you know, more of our friends who are, who are, who, who really are looking for hope, there's people who are watching today who are, who are just looking to be encouraged. And yes. maybe, maybe this, maybe it exists in Jesus. And the answer is yes, it does. Yeah, like it totally exists in Christ. Um, but finding finding that hope in Jesus, how do we encourage folks? First of all, who maybe are tuning in today and, and just don't really understand um, how Christ can bring hope to them. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, we'll fo I'll follow it up with, and how do we encourage our people to be bringers of hope? 100%. So let's start with folks who are tuning in, perhaps who, how does Jesus bring hope to your life? Well, here's, here's the thing for, for me, and I, I want to speak out of my own personal experience, yeah. is that, you know, I, my, just a short testimony of myself, mm. I, you know, I was a, a basketball player growing up, I, I was one of the top rated basketball players in Canada in high school. I was scouted by University of Washington to play wow. top level basketball. And, um, and, I'll, and I'll say this, all that was amazing, but I always knew in my heart that there was something more that, that was for my life. That, you know, one day that even though all the accolades that you have, all the, all the accomplishments, it's interesting because I think a lot of people are realizing this. Um, when tough times come, tough times never take into consideration accolades, personal achievements. Tough times come for those that are highly successful yeah. and those that aren't. Yeah. And, and, and so in my own life, I realized I'm like one day, you know, there will be a time when, when my life on this earth is over. Yeah. And what am I going to do? And what is that going to look like? And so I remember when the Lord started to speak to me and, and say, Samuel, like there is, there is, there's so much more and I want to give you a hope and a peace that no matter what goes on, that I am with you. And wow. this is where Landon, like this is where for myself, you know, in the situation that we're in right now, where you can feel that there's, there's not a lot of hope and yeah. there's a lot of fear that's yes. out there right now. Like just even going to the grocery store, going to Costco and you can feel like there's so much, there's a tangible fear and the Lord spoke to me and said, Samuel, like this is where I come in. I bring peace into your life. I bring peace to the storm. Come you on. don't have to be motivated by fear. You don't have to feel like, like, um, uh, uh, helpless. I'm with you everywhere that you go. Wow. I think, I think too, that that's the beauty of the love of God. Yeah. Is that it, it sets us in this place of, you know, experiencing this new grace, this, this new... But one of the things that I think that a lot of people will feel often is that, well, you know, I just have... I'm not a good enough person yeah. for God to love <laughs> me right now. Or, 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 you know, if I... Just as soon as I get my life together, then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll connect with Christ. But the fact of the matter is, it's, that's like saying, you know, as soon as I feel better, I'll, I'll go to the hospital like this is the thing is that God God wants to meet with people now yes and he's actually interested in the pain that they're experiencing now and the frustration they're experiencing now and he's and he's he's excitedly wanting to to minister life and peace a hundred percent like he wants to meet you where you're at he he He's not waiting for you to, to set yourself up better or, or make your life uh, uh, more, uh, uh, you know, put together. Like, he, he's ready to meet you now. And, and when he does, that weight that's on your heart, that, that weight that you're feeling, will get lifted off. And there is a peace. There is a peace that can be re revealed in the midst of a storm for you. And, and if you're here uh, with us today and perhaps you haven't made a commitment to follow Christ or, or haven't had that opportunity to engage him, uh, you can force this storm to serve into Come your on. peace by coming to Christ. He, 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 he is the one who can calm the storm. And he's also the one who can walk on the water in the midst of the storm. But he's for you. And because he's for you, who can be against you? And so we would encourage you today. We're going to give you a chance a little later on to, to engage that. Now, Sammy, when it comes to addressing, addressing um, the whole element of, of engaging the presence of God in our home. Yes. What would you say to our, our friends today watching of, of how to, you know, make that, making his pri presence a priority 100%. and experiencing it together as a family? Well, and I think 
more now than ever, right? Like, like we, here we are, and we're in a place where, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck at home a bit. And, and this is something that I've realized we need to learn how to make his presence a priority in our homes. And so here's a couple of ways to do it. Number one, I, I feel this, is that if you've got family today, this is where with your kids, with your right. spouse, it is so important. It, like, I, I cannot tell you enough that we have to stay connected. Yeah. We have to stay connected with other believers because there's a presence that's found in the corporate body more now than ever yes. with being online. And I know sometimes, you know, being online, it's challenging. There's things that go on that, that it, you know, again, it makes me appreciate. Can I tell you something right now? It makes me appreciate the local church and the body when I come into church. Can I, <laughs> can I tell you right now? I'm yes. like, thank you, Jesus. Because, but here's the great thing, the opportunity now to connect corporately because you're not alone. Right. And there's something that happens when we get together like that. The second thing is this, is that I would encourage people that if you want to have the presence of God in your home, have worship music playing in your house. Learn how to have a lifestyle of worship. I find that worship is one of the easiest ways for people to encounter God's presence. Mm. And it's not hard. You know, whether, you know, we've got iTunes, we've got all the different music that, that you, can, you can download and you can stream. And it's absolutely amazing just to be able to do that. Um, also too, I would say this, is that continually feed yourself on on. God's stories, and this is what uh, we do as a family. We talk about, me and my kids and my wife, for meal times, we start to share about what God has done. And so I start <laughs> sharing with my kids. It's one of the best times. Mm -hmm. My kid's six years old, my oldest six, my, my middle's three, and my youngest is two, just turned two. Okay. And I love it because of the fact that we share about cool God stories as a family. And all of a sudden what happens is their faith is energized. Wow, dad, you prayed for somebody and you saw a miracle. Wow, dad, this happened. And there's things that you can do to seed into your family. Yes. That element of faith because heaven responds to faith. Yes. And so the more that we can put on worship music to just to release faith into our homes, the more that we can hear testimonies about what God is doing on the earth right now. Because in the midst of this, he's moving. Yes, he this is. is the thing, Leonard. He's moving right now all over the world. And even though that we might be confined to our homes right now and, and limited amount of movement, guys, he's moving. He's moving online. He's moving in different countries right now. And I believe that he wants to take homes and turn them into places of revival. And so just those are just a couple of ways that I believe God wants to move. That's profound. Um, while you were sharing, I'm just going to um, lean into this for a moment because mm -hmm. um, I've got a word of knowledge. Suddenly I've got a, I've got a headache that's like I, I'm, I don't have, I didn't have one prior to this, but just suddenly in the back of my head and on this side, and I believe that somebody's suffering with a migraine right now. So in Jesus' name, we break and cancel that assignment of the enemy over your life. We command that migraine to go and we speak life and peace over your body. And so if that's you, uh, find us Facebook online and, and let us know how the Lord has touched you. Uh, right now. And I, 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 I share that because I think that for those who are perhaps new and, and, and learning about the faith, that's how simple it is 100%. to follow and listen to the Lord. It's just, it's just, you know, that simple element. Now, when we talk about uh, at the same time, you know, establishing um, that revival atmosphere in our families. One of the things that, that the Lord has really spoken to me about this week, and I perhaps will speak on it um, in, in the weeks to come, is, is, is that we uh, have this opportunity, and I shared this last week for those of you who joined us, that we, we have this opportunity to dig down, to, to dig deep, and to perhaps do some of the things that we have never done before because we have the time perhaps to do that. Some people are working harder than ever. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of us, you know, there's many who have just a little bit more time and, and we sort of feed our, um, I have, a, you know, I, I say we, I, I have a tendency to sort of feed uh, quiet with entertainment. To just, you know, sort of escapism. I don't think there's anything wrong with being entertained in this season, but it's just very natural for, you know, what would normally be one hour of, of some sort of on, uh, you know, streaming for sure. service yeah. to be like, you know, 10 or 12. And, 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 but I feel we have this opportunity to, to dig deep and to engage God. And, and I've been purposely digging into to some of the heroes of the faith and, and learning about you know, that anointing that they 
carry the, that, that touch of heaven on their mm -hmm. lives that they carried, whether or not they, they walked, to, you know, in healing or, or, you know, whatever, you know, anointing, evangelism. Um, they, they dug deep. It was like you don't earn the favor of God, but I feel like you, you prepare yourself for his favor. What would you say to that in, in this time? Well, 100%. I think with, again, with so much that's changing right mm. now, I love what you said. You know, we, we actually, we have the time now. I, I feel like one of the, the biggest, you know, I don't, I don't want to say excuses that we've, we've had in the past is, is, you know, I don't have enough time. Well, now, guess what? We have time to, to go after God. We have time to dig deep. And I would say this is that every move of God that I've ever seen, like read about, you know, talk to people that have been a part of it. It always started with people getting hungry for God. Yeah. And there was a hunger that took place. And I, and I feel like we're in a place right now where, you know, it's interesting, Landon. This was, this was big for me. I don't know for you. You know, here we are. You can't go to movie theaters. Sports right now is canceled. You have all these things that are going on. Yeah. And in the sense of entertainment, and I'm not saying entertainment's bad because right. I, I, I also stream as well. But I, I find though, it's, it's almost like, like there's an opportunity for distractions that are just being removed right now in the season that we're in. It's like yeah. they're gone. Yeah. And here we are, and we've realized we're taking inventory of our time and realizing, oh, I got extra time. What am I going to do? Right. And this is where I found is that every move of God has always come down to a place where people have gotten hungry for God, and they've taken a good amount of time every day and they pursued after him. They, 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 they said, you know what, God, I want to know you more. Because here's the thing, that the history of the revivalists that have gone before us, that's our inheritance. Yes. This is what we need to realize in this season yeah. is that this is our place of what God has done for them. He's not a, a respecter of persons. What he can do in one, he wants to do in another. And this is where if we would allow the Lord to bring us into a place of being focused and actually being like, you know what, I... I'm going to, however long this season is, I'm going to invest more. Right. Because you, you get what you invest into. Just like yes. anything else, if you want to invest in your health, how do you do that? You take time. Yes. So whether that's, you know, preparing healthier meals, whether that's taking time to the gym, there's all those things that are a product of healthy living. But the key element of that is time. Yeah. So if you want a healthy, strong, spiritual life, this is your perfect chance right now to develop a pattern of time and to lock in, to get hungry for God, to dive in. Because I believe right now that we are closer to a, a massive move of God, Landon. Like, I, I, I believe this with all my heart. We are in the greatest days that the world has ever been in. Yes. Right now. By far. And the opportunity for us as the church to rise up, like Isaiah 60 talks about, in the midst of darkness and gross darkness, right. there, I believe there is a body that is rising up, filled with God's presence. Yes. And it's for us today. You know, when we were, we were talking earlier, and I was sharing this with one of my staff, earlier this week, and, and like I said, I, I'll probably expand on it a little bit more in a message, but um, that as physical beings, mm -hmm. we, we are in a perpetual state, or we're, we're in a varying states, sorry, of hunger. Whether you're, whether you're full just after a meal, or whether you're hungry waiting for a meal, um, your body physically is in, is in some state of hunger. Uh, because, I mean, as soon as you're filled, your body immediately begins to break it down uh, for, for its purpose. And, and I say that because I think sometimes what we do as, as Christians, we actually don't understand, because there is an element that when you stop feeling hungry, you're mm -hmm. actually starving Wow, physically. So if, if we were to take that and extrapolate that and bring that into the spiritual, we recognize that as spiritual beings, we're actually always in a, a state of, of, you know, varying degrees of hunger. And that it's our responsibility as believers to feed that hunger, 100%. to actually feed it so that we get, so that we continue to, to get hungry as it were for more. Because, you know, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be satisfied. Satis satisfaction doesn't necessarily mean filled. It means that there's, a, there's another realm of engaging the goodness of God and Come a new on. revelation of his nature. And I think right now, you know, for those uh, online today who, who are following Christ and, and who, are, who are walking, feed your hunger. Engage him right now. This is the time to drill down 
and, and lean into these things because I believe, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel the Holy Spirit sh- telling me to share this, so I'm going to do that. I believe that we're in a season right now where if, if the people of God who, who recognize, you know, call by his name, humble themselves and pray. First of all, I feel that corporately we can begin to push things back mm-hmm. like we've never pushed them back before. But secondly, I feel like there are anointings, like there are, um, uh, to use a better word that's a little bit broader, that there are gifts from heaven waiting to be released that are at the same measure, are at the same parallel of the Amy come, Semple McPherson's, of the Heidi Baker's, come on. Of, of the, you, do you know what I mean? 100%. Like, like where, where the John G. Lakes rise up again. And, and because they tarry in prayer, that they, they lean into it. And, and, and I want to encourage you, like your prayer life is, is, you know, a lot of people look at prayer as being boring. Well, it is if you haven't learned how to break into it. Mm-hmm. If it's just simply this religious moment of bless me this, bless that, cover this, pray for that, you're missing out on the on the connection that the Lord and so we have a few minutes left here and I think I'm having so much fun um I, I, if you can you stay a little 100%. longer okay so so for those of you who are at home what we're going to do I don't know who to look at give me a wave who should I look at okay for those of you at home uh after we're done our service if you want to stick around we'll take a five minute break and then we're going to come back and Sammy and I are just going to continue to visit with one another and so you can join us for a little extended time of church if you'd like to do that and, uh, and, and perhaps if you're on Facebook Live and you have a question or two that you'd like to throw our way, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if they're, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll share what we think we have answers for. But, um, um, but in, in just for a couple of minutes, just for a short minute, when it comes to stoking your hunger, what would, you, what would you say for folks and how to engage hunger? Because you, frankly, you're one of the most energized, hungry guys I've ever, not just physically, although <laughs> let's, let's face it, one of our greatest connections is over food. Oh, 100%. But um, uh, you carry this, this, like you're ready to, it feels like you're always ready to explode uh, with, with what God is doing in your life. How do you maintain that? How do you press into that? Well, and, and that's a really good question. I actually, I love that question because I get asked that a lot. And so here, here's the thing. You're, you're, I actually, I take some examples from the natural and, and, and I apply them to the spirit. You know, with, with me, I've been, you know, Landon, you've been walking with me for a while now. I've been in a health transformation yes. in this season. I've lost over 120 pounds in a little over a year. It's been absolutely incredible. It's been phenomenal. And, and you, I know you've seen the difference in me for sure. Yes. But I want to take this, this natural perspective and bring it over spiritually. Sure. Here's what I always thought naturally. If I would just eat less and less and less, I would just lose weight. Right. Which there's elements to that that can work. Right. But I actually found something groundbreaking that completely changed my diet was when I started to work out and I started to lift weights, my appetite started to go up. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I started to to want to eat more. And I thought at first, oh, that's, you know, that's a bad thing. I don't want to, you know, I shouldn't eat eating more because I want to keep my calories down to lose more weight. And then I realized the science of if you start to eat more while working out, all of a sudden what happens is your body's engine starts to go higher, get more and more and more, and I actually lose more weight by eating more. And this is something I want to transfer over to the spiritual side for a second. Because many people, they have a diet that they're like, okay, you know, I have 20 minutes of prayer or, or 30 minutes of the Bible right. and all these different things. And, and, and I like what you said. We don't want to turn our relationship with the Lord religious. Right. God is a person. He yeah. can actually be your best friend. Yes. And this is what I found. The more that I digest of God, in the sense of I listen to podcasts, I worship, all these different things, and then I activate and, and, I, and I start to pray for people. I love what you did today. You just did a, you moved in the you know, word of knowledge. You believe in God for healing just right now online. And so I start to exercise my faith. And many, and here's simple ways to exercise. Give a word of encouragement out at yes. the grocery store. Yes. When you're on Facebook, maybe God will pray, you know, give you a word for someone. You can give a message. There's never been a greater time mm. to be a messenger of hope mm. in this season that we are in right now. But here's the thing. The more I eat of God, the more I get more hungry for him. The more I, just like in the natural, as you're, like for, I found, as I'm eating more healthy food and as I'm, as I'm working out, all of a sudden I get more hungry that way. In the same thing in the spirit, as I'm eating more and feasting on who God is and the goodness of God and making sure, like I said, worship music, different messages, hearing stories, uh, praying for people, all of a sudden I, I'm more hungry now 
And I can honestly say than I've ever been. Come on. And it's because I, I don't allow myself, well, you know, I, I only have, you know, well, I only have 10 minutes today, so I'm just going to do this. No, like you can be hungry throughout the day. It doesn't, your relationship with God doesn't just have to be a set time, a set, set place. Sure. We can pursue God every day, all the time. And so, yeah, that's just a couple things. And I, and I think that that's brilliant because the fact is, is what you're saying is, is what I'm hearing you say within that it's, it's what I'm consuming 100%. that is determining what, you know, like, cause, cause for me, like when I, you know, like there's, there's those times, right? All two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, you know, pickles, <laughs> onions, right? And it's just like, Oh Lord, you know, when me and the big Mac become one, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, but, but it's like, it's like that doesn't serve me. No. You know, and in the same way, we need to learn to be uh, committed to, to consuming what serves us. 100%. And there's many wholesome things out there. There's, there's a lot of, you know, there, it's more than, and, and we can, in these times, we can, let our, we can let our guards down. We can get lax in what, in what we consume. And so, you know, look for the wholesome things. Look, we've got several things. I don't know which camera I should look at. This one, look, you know, look for wholesome things. Uh, Kingdom Wild on parable.tv. <laughs> look, for, look for wholesome things to consume. And, and engage that. Listen, our, our time is, 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 is almost gone. Can you believe it? Uh, it's so fast. And so uh, we're going we're gonna, to, after, after we close our time, uh, we'll take a little break. We'll put a countdown on the, uh, on the website. And so we'll continue to stream uh, uh, through that. So there'll be a countdown there available for you. And uh, you can re-engage. And, and like I said, if you have some questions uh, through FaceTime, uh, Facebook uh, Live, uh, you can send that to us. And we'll have a quick quick look over those uh, during our little break and uh, come back together and just share. But for those of you who are joining us today who perhaps have never had the opportunity to engage the peace of God that we're talking about, this, this storm, this, this time of this storm, uh, God is wanting to meet you in it. He's wanting to meet you. He's wanting to, he's wanting to touch you. He's wanting to bring life to you. It's very simple. Mankind was created for relationship with God. We were created to have relationship with Him. Uh, you were never meant to be outside of relationship with Him. Uh, but sin broke off our capacity for relationship. Jesus, though, came. And He took that sin upon Himself and died on the cross. He, he died a death, lived a life that we could never live, and died a death that we could never, we could never accomplish and rose again from the dead, overcoming sin in the grave, so that you and I could be returned into perfect relationship with God. And, and the cross is a covenant. It's an unbreakable promise because of unconditional love. God loves you so much. He's not angry at you. He, he's not looking to get you. He's not looking to judge you. Uh, he released all of that on the cross that Christ bore on your behalf. And if you're here with us today and you'd like to ask Jesus to be a part of your life and lean into following him, I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer. And, uh, and, and, when, and when we're done, if you, if you uh, prayed that for the first time or perhaps are, are uh, recommitting your life and, and, and choosing to follow Christ, um, you can email us at church at gatewayfamily.ca and uh, we'll be in touch with you and encourage you. And if you visited us today and you'd like to, uh, you know, speak to us, please email that same email, church at gatewayfamily.ca and one of our leaders will be in touch with you. But if you're here today and you'd like to uh, invite Jesus to be Lord of your life, I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer. Uh, and it's just simply this, Jesus, thank you that you love me. And thank you that you died for me. I believe you died and rose again from the dead so that I could be free. Today I choose to follow you. Come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior. And I commit my life to, to follow you and to be yours. Jesus, I love you. Thank you. Help me to follow you with all my strength. In your name, amen. amen.